In this short presentation, I will explain to you two important elements of project scheduling and the critical path method. First, we will look into the calculation of the slack or the float. And the next thing will be about the determination of the critical path of the project. The first thing we'll be looking at is the calculation of the slack or the float. We have the precedence diagram. We calculated already early start and early, early finish times. The next thing to do is to calculate the slack of all the activities. And the slack or float is determined by the formula late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. And we can do that very quickly for the project. We see for activity A, 3 minus 1 is 2. For activity B, this is 0. For D also, for G also, for H also. So here we have the slack or the float of the activities. And in some cases, people will say the critical path is given by the activities with slack equal to 0. That is not always correct. It depends on the situation. Everything depends on the fact when does the project has to be completed. We calculated our estimate of the duration of the project, which is eight periods. And now it depends on the sponsor how much time we get to complete the project. In this case, we have eight periods. Both of them are the same. In this specific case, the activities with slack zero are in fact the activities on the critical path. But like I said, it's not always the case. Imagine that we have 10 periods to complete a project. What will happen? All the activities which are on the critical path or the activities with duration or slack zero, these activities will now have a slack equal to two. And when you follow the rule, the activities with slack equal to zero are on the critical path, we would have the conclusion that there is no critical path. Every project has at least one critical path. Now, what is the importance of the slack? Basically, we have to see what's happening. And let's look at one of those critical path activities. Let's take the last one. It's the easiest one. What happens when our activity starts later than six or early start or late start, they're the same. When it starts later, we will see that the duration of the, or the end date of the project will be postponed. It has an impact on the duration of the project. The same thing is when the duration is shorter. For example, when activity H will be done faster or will be uh, managed to do it in two periods instead of three, we will see that we get a second critical path and the project duration will be reduced. Activities on the critical path will have a direct impact on the duration of the project. On the other hand, when we have, for example, activity A, as long as A doesn't start or later than the late start or finishes later than the late finish, it will have no impact on the duration of the project. What can happen here? Well, our activity A can take three periods without influencing the duration of the project. Or our activity can start on period three and finish on period three. Those are, in fact, the results or the consequences when we have an activity that's not on the critical path, and we will use that later in some other calculations. Once we know the slack, we can also determine the critical path by identifying the longest path. Basically, we don't have to calculate the slack before, but if we have the slack, it will help us. Anyway, we have to find the longest path, and how do we do that? First of all, we identify all the paths through the network, and we have first path, ADF, we have ADGH, we have BDF, we have BDGH, and we find CE 
age. What we now have to do is just to calculate the duration of the path by adding the duration of all the activities. So this is in fact the longest path. So this is the critical path, the path BDGH with a duration of eight periods is the critical path. We'll see later in some other exercises that we may have critical path convergence and critical paths can even change, for example, during execution. We have to be careful with the identification of the critical path and we have to be sure that we always know which is the critical path. This is the end of this video about calculating the slack and identifying the critical path. Critical path is very important to know. Uh, we have to see what's happening. All the activities that are on the critical path, they are in fact without any reserve. If something happens to them, if they get lo uh, longer or shorter, they will have a direct impact on the duration of the project. We also have to be careful with uh, other paths because when the activities are increasing or in duration or the critical path activities are decreasing, we may have critical path convergence and even in some cases we may have a change of critical path. Remember, there is always one critical path in the project and in the worst case, all paths can become critical. I thank you and I'm looking forward to seeing you in one of my next presentations. Bye-bye.